what is a proxy measurement? Scientists have measures of the Earth's climate dating back millions of years, but how exactly are scientists able to tell what the Earth was like before humans even existed to measure it? The answer is proxies. In the study of past climates, a proxy is a preserved physical characteristic that can be used to stand in for direct measurements. This is like measuring a tree's age by its rings. Studying past mineral levels in caves using stalactites and stalagmites, explaining climate records by drilling ocean sediments, or exploring past climate with ice cores. Ice cores specifically are a very important way for scientists to understand past climate. Imagine if you got a frozen slushy drink layered with all the different flavors, then stuck in your straw, covered the top, and pulled it out. This would be like an ice core. Each different layer in the slushy has a different flavor, just like in real ice cores, each different layer has a different date and chemical composition. Since the cores that scientists are retrieving can come from miles underground, they need to use something quite a bit larger than a straw. These tools can range from a small hand auger, such as the pico, which reaches 40 meters underground, to a huge drill, such as the disc drill, which can travel 4,000 meters underground. After the cores are retrieved, they are cut, packaged, and examined by scientists. While examining the ice cores, researchers are looking for changes in colors, density, porosity, and chemical composition between the layers of ice. These layers match up with cyclical changes in carbon dioxide and temperature levels caused by the seasons and glacial interglacial cycles. A glacial cycle is a period of time within an ice age with freezing temperatures where glaciers grow, while an interglacial period, which we're all living in right now, is a time of warmer climate between the glacial periods. These periods are typically caused by natural changes in the Earth's orbit, which affects the energy the planet receives from the sun. Recent measurements using modern instruments have shown that we're no longer following natural trends. Since the Industrial Revolution in 1760, human activities have had an effect on observed temperature change. For hundreds of thousands of years, carbon dioxide levels range from 280 parts per million during warm interglacial periods, and 180 parts per million during cold glacial periods, until 1950, when carbon dioxide broke 280 parts per million for the first time in recorded history. Since 1950, carbon dioxide has been increasing rapidly, and measurements now have reached a new high above 400 parts per million. But why does this matter? It's because CO2 and temperature are directly related. As one increases, so does the other. A steady increase in carbon dioxide means a steady increase in average global temperature. Although carbon dioxide and temperature are very closely related, scientists don't only rely on carbon dioxide measurements to tell us about past climate. They also measure temperature using hydrogen isotopes as a proxy. Isotopes are identical atoms with different masses due to different amounts of neutrons. There are two stable hydrogen isotopes, protium, which is normal hydrogen, with one proton, one electron, and no neutrons, and deuterium, which has one proton, one electron, and one neutron. Deuterium is very rare. Colder glacial periods have less of the heavier isotope, deuterium, in the snow, since it is more difficult for it to evaporate, and those that do evaporate typically fall as rain before they reach the poles. Warm interglacial periods have more deuterium in the snow, because the warmer atmosphere forces more to evaporate from the ocean. As the temperature changes, the ratio of protium to deuterium hydrogen isotopes changes, but since deuterium is very rare, this ratio is a very small number. In order to make this number more useful, scientists express it in delta notation, meaning they put it on a scale and compare it to a standard value of ocean water, which is zero. This means that all the ice core delta values are negative, since no ice core has as much deuterium as what would have started off in the ocean. Over time, scientists have been able to fine-tune their studies and relate isotopic delta values to exact temperature measurements, with very negative delta values meaning colder temperatures, and less negative delta values meaning warmer temperatures. These measurements allow us to have a baseline to which we can compare modern values of carbon dioxide and temperature. In this way, ice cores act as a time machine recording data and history from as far back as a million years. By understanding the past, we're better able to predict the future of our planet.